Welcome to our DeWitt Physical Therapy Virtual Sports Medicine Open House. My name is Ryan DeWitt. I'm a physical therapist and owner of DeWitt Physical Therapy and CrossFit Up next door. So a little bit about our clinic to start. In 2011, I opened up DeWitt PT inside of a personal training studio. My goal at the time was really just to provide a space for athletes to be able to bridge that gap back to the activities that they love. As a athlete, as a former competitive athlete in like the high school realms, but also somebody that just found myself transitioning into CrossFit and surfing and snowboarding and these other activities, I really felt like there just wasn't a great resource in town to blend both return to sport, sports in general, especially in the fitness community, and manual therapy, of which I had a ton of experience and training in. So DeWitt Physical Therapy was born. Being inside the gym setting gave me a really good inside look about how movement works. And with that, learning how to better program an athlete's progression from, say, injury through that middle phase and into that late phase rehab. And really what I'm talking about in this virtual open house is how we go from those early phases, but we finish all the way through. And that's what I found is most PT was kind of taking people here, but their return to sport demands were really up here. And there wasn't really a lot of either information or just any progression towards returning people back up at that high level or checking that box to make sure that they were. So with that, we just, I decided to try to create a space where we could take all that knowledge of strength and conditioning with like a CSCS background, and all of our PT background, mix it with the, the PT and the manual therapy that we were doing in the early phases and be able to transition somebody all the way back up. But most importantly is also test them. So our return to sport testing is one of the things that we are known for the most and one thing that we're gonna highlight in this video. So when we start thinking about sports medicine, it's not just like the really cool stuff up at the high end, there's definitely that. It's about giving people a really good foundational base, good range of motion, good muscle activation, good movement patterns. That's like phase one, right? Oh, and don't screw it up. Yeah, we got that, don't worry. Then it's about making them stronger through reinforcing those movement patterns using whatever tools we have at our disposal. So we have weights, we have tools like blood flow restriction training. We actually have two units for the only PT clinic in Santa Cruz that, that utilizes that. We also use the new fit newbie, which you'll learn more about here in a little bit, which is a direct current electrical stim machine. So we can do really targeted strengthening with that newbie. So we can just like with the BFR, we can do lower load, lower intensity, but the muscles are going to get the benefit of doing higher intensity while we're still being safe with the tissues that are healing. So that's important. But then being able to go from through that mid phase and then we can get into the plyos, then we can get into, into the agility work, then we can go into like the heavier lifting, the explosiveness, the power development. We can go into all of that. And again, that big crescendo is gonna be that return to sport testing. This is where we're gonna know where are they. Not just based on timeline, not just based on our overall experience, which is all important but based on research. So we use the move to perform return to sport criteria, which includes a FMS, a Y balance for either upper or lower quarter based on obviously what kind of surgery they had. And then if it's lower quarter, we're gonna do a single hop, triple hop and a triple crossover hop. And we're gonna put all of that into a report and be able to give that report not only to the athlete, but also to our referring physicians. And now this is super important because there's cut points and these guys are really smart, these move to perform guys. They have it so that there are cut points based on age, gender, level, and sport. So we can really take a look at where that athlete is, what sport they play, how old they are, and their gender and go through and see what their relative risk of, of injury or re-injury would be. Now this is super important when it gets back to return to sport because we wanna make sure that they are getting back to it and, and getting back to it the right way and safely. And we don't wanna send them out there with like not being up to snuff. We know that the research calls for 95 to 100% of limb symmetry index. So that is gonna be our goal. And these objective measures that we have included in this move to perform return to sport testing are gonna show that. And here's the thing, we're also okay if they're not quite there yet. Meaning if somebody comes in and they're only at 85% and they're not at that 95 to 100%, we're okay saying per research, you shouldn't go back yet. 
let us continue to do some work. Let's get you a little stronger. Let's make sure that we can build that confidence, build that strength, so that when you go back, we know that you are doing really well. You have the best chance of success. I think that's really important in athletes of all levels, but especially these youth athletes. So again, in a few seconds, I'm gonna take you through a little bit more about how we go through each one of these phases, how we integrate manual therapy, including things like instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization, myofascial decompression, some people will call that like cupping, blood flow restriction training, use of the new fit newbie, strength training, and uh, our return to sport criteria. Go ahead, stay tuned, enjoy the video, and we'll wrap it up here at the end. So as a orthopedic physical therapy clinic that specializes in sports medicine and manual therapy, manual therapy is a big component of what we do with our patients, especially in the early phases of rehab when they need it the most. We gotta get that range of motion to be able to move forward to satisfy those functional patterns, right? Great, so just a little insight into how this process works. A lot of times we'll have a patient come on in. If we're gonna work on some knee range of motion, getting them down on the table, might take a look at this patellofemoral joint mobility here if we're working on his knee, making sure everything's okay. Just a little bit of easy mobilization. You might take him up into some gentle flexion extension type work. Tend to bias into flexion first, extension second, because we really wanna work on that gait mechanic and having that terminal knee extension be something that we encourage. And if we have a lot of soft tissue restrictions or just tightness that's around that knee that might be restricting it, we have a few different ways that we can employ different tools to improve that mobility. So we can obviously use our hands, we can also use cups, and we can also use instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. So when we use the cups, a lot of times we'll just put a little bit of lotion on there, and all we're gonna do is go ahead and get a little bit of negative pressure in there, and then just slide it along that tissue, trying to get a little bit of improvement in those sliding surfaces. Doesn't have to be real aggressive. We're just trying to A, modulate the nervous system, but also B, just treat that tissue a little bit specifically. Secondarily, if we use instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization, we don't need to get in there and dig real hard. Same thing, we just need to try to move through that tissue. Again, huge component of this is neuromodulation, but we can work on all the tissue kind of around that knee, that patellar tendon, can be really, really helpful in this phase of healing. If we finish with that and then go ahead and mobilize and then make sure we're getting all the range that we need to out of there, that's great. We'd also go ahead and look above and below. So we'll work on the ankle, work on the foot, work on the hip as well. Then it's a matter of turning on some of the muscles in the way that we want it. So if I really want him to tighten that quad, we can do some quad sets, but I can also manually resist him and just try to get a little bit of encouragement here. And restoring functional patterns, like restoring Flexion range of motion is great. Restoring extension range of motion is great, but it has to be functional. So right there, we just kicked in that, that terminal knee extension. Elijah, go ahead and stand up for me. Yep. And then next, we'd even just take them into, go ahead, can you straighten that knee for me in standing? So now we're gonna work on that terminal knee extension. Good, and I can even resist them at the hip too. Boom. Boom. And now we're getting them to walk a better good step all the way through this time. Good, so again, we're taking that range of motion, we're taking some of those tactile cues and trying to put them into a bigger pattern. Why don't you step forward with that left foot, back with that right leg, and if he's gonna give me like a little bit of a lunge, I can even come in here and work on his tibial rotation and make sure everything's aligning really well. And similarly, I'm gonna have you go ahead and stand into a squat stance for me. Elijah, go ahead and give me a squat. Do the same thing where I can work on that tibial rotation, make sure the alignment through that patellofemoral joint's really good. And again, I'm gonna use my manual skills and I'm gonna, we're gonna use our, our manual therapy to reinforce and restore these functional patterns because the next phase of rehab is gonna be all about getting him stronger, right? So that's how we start our patients off. And we'll do as much of this as we need to through the healing process and then get them lifting and training and getting stronger. Okay, so another thing that makes DeWitt Physical Therapy different as far as how we approach sports medicine is our use of blood flow restriction training. You might have heard of this called BFR. Effectively, what we do is we take a surgical grade tourniquet and we use it to occlude the blood flow in either the arm or the leg. We always wanna put it up nice and high. It'll have a systemic effect where we occlude 
either 80% of the blood flow in the leg or 50% of the blood flow in the arm. And what that'll do is we have two different types of muscle groups. We have our endurance muscles, which are our, our type ones, and we have our speed and power muscles, which are our type twos. Now we know that our, to really get somebody back to sport, we gotta get into their type two muscles. But that's really hard to do with entry level basic exercises, right? So you think someone's just gonna get back to snatching and doing like a bunch of crazy overhead presses or squatting 500 pounds, just doing like really easy rehab exercises, not gonna happen. So we use the BFR to effectively occlude the blood flow. It creates a hypoxic environment. What does that mean? It means that we choke out, we take the oxygen away from those endurance muscles, so it makes the type two muscles have to kick on. Usually you have to load somebody at 80 to 85% of their one rep max and do it a lot of volume to get those type twos to kick in. With this, we can actually just occlude that local region, that, that muscle group or body part, and we can get those type twos to kick in using anything from just gravity or the weight of their arm or their leg, all the way up to like 20 to 30% of their one rep max. So we don't have to work very hard and we can get the same benefits of pushing somebody super hard, super heavy. And again, throughout their rehab, that's important because we can't always load them because we're waiting for tissues to heal and all that stuff. All right, so we're gonna show you how this works. So we got Elijah over here, we got a cuff on his leg. So we're gonna pretend that he is early post-op on a knee surgery, so say like an ACL. So we got that there, It's all the machine's all set up. I'm just gonna have Elijah start with just kind of squeezing his quad, holding for a second, then relaxing. And then I'm gonna have him progress into doing like a straight leg raise. For Justin here, we got a cuff up on his arm. We're gonna pretend that he's got a shoulder injury or even like a post-op shoulder that we don't that we can exercise, but we can't really load just yet. I'm gonna have him start with just some sideline external rotation. And while these exercises look really easy, normally if I had them do it, we would never get into those type two muscles because they're so easy that just those endurance muscles are having to work, those type ones. So we're not gonna get into those type twos. But when we use the cuff and we choke out those type ones, even just doing these basic against gravity exercises, because of the effect that it has on that local musculature in that entire shoulder girdle and that entire hip and lower leg, we're kicking in those type two muscles and we're getting a strong rehabilitation effect out of it. Okay, let's progress this. Let's go to the next phase of rehab. I'm gonna have Justin just add some weight. So now we can load him and let's say he's getting pretty darn strong. I'm gonna give him a small weight and have him do BFR with that weight. That weight is gonna feel 10 times heavier within a few reps, which is great. Make those muscles really burn and fatigue, which is what's gonna help them grow. It's gonna give the neurologic response that we want. It's gonna give like the growth hormone response that we want. We're gonna build muscle, build strength, all the cool stuff. For Elijah, we're gonna go, come on over here. We're gonna, again, this kind of middle phase of rehab. I'm gonna put him on some knee extensions just to really pump that quad up. And same thing, it doesn't have to be a lot of weight. Elijah's a strong guy, but just doing some knee extensions with that BFR, it's gonna be a whole lot harder. So again, it's gonna choke out those type ones, make those type twos have to work, okay? All right, so this would be more like a middle phase of rehab. Let's go late phase rehab. Okay, come on off there. Justin, come on up. I'm gonna have Elijah do some goblet squats here and I'm gonna have Justin do some ring rows. And Justin, you can make those ring rows as hard as you wanna make them, as long as that arm's still working. Now granted, we wouldn't do this boom, 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 all three, there's a whole rep scheme and everything like that, but just wanna give you guys an idea that this is something that's scalable from early rehab all the way into late phase. And this is how we build strength this is how we build muscle size, which is super important after surgery especially, and especially ACLs. And we can use this to help push performance. We can make them work smarter. We definitely are making them work hard, but we can make them work smarter where we don't have to load them. I don't have to put 300 pounds on Elijah's back. I can give him 30 pounds, 50 pounds, and have him, his muscles and his body feel like it's doing a whole bunch of load. So that's really where this stuff is special. This is something that we do with so many of our patients. It even overflow into, hey, I just had this like nagging hip thing or nagging knee thing, or maybe I got like some shoulder tendonitis or I got some you know, golfers or tennis elbow. There's a lot of benefits in uh, the tendinopathy pathologies as well, as far as how do we manage those and get people stronger. There's a lot of benefits for just kicking on more muscle and uh, muscle, um, 
fibers and more <laughs> like muscle groups to try to get as people as strong as we can as quickly as we can. So we can use this all through rehab, again, starting really low down and all the way up until they finish and they're going back to sport. So. Part of our cutting edge approach here at DeWitt Physical Therapy to sports medicine includes using cutting edge modalities. So we use the New Fit Newbie, which is a direct current electrical stimulation machine, which is very different than our traditional alternating current machines. And so we can use it to enhance motor unit recruitment and build functional patterns with our patients as they progress through rehab. So especially for any lower quarter injury or surgery, we know that muscle activation is huge. We want to get that quad going. We want to sink it back into that whole system to optimize function. So we're going to first start with some low level, like kind of think pre, uh, post op exercises with Elijah and we're going to kind of kind of demonstrate like an expedited timeline of integrated exercises as we go along. So Elijah what we're going to do is we got a pad on his VMO and his rectus femoris and we're going to start turning that up and tell me when you feel something. There, it's twitchy. Good. I want it to be about a 6 or a 7 out of 10. So I want it to be pretty strong. Great. Cool. All right. So, we, so we're just focusing on the quad at this point, And we all know how important that quad is after any kind of like knee or lower body injury and surgery. So all I want you to do there is just go ahead and give me a couple of quad sets. And so we're going to squeeze. We're going to hold. We're going to work on that time under tension. The machine is really trying to make that mind-body connection and to really strengthen that neural pathway along with getting those muscles to really kick in and, and recruit and fire more motor units. So we can progress from there. We can take it into our quad sets, as our straight leg raises. Even if he doesn't have a quad lag, we're just reinforcing movement patterns with this, and that's okay. We're still gonna get more out of it. We wanna think about working smarter, not just harder. Still want him to work hard, but not only smarter are not only hard. All right, next, go ahead and put your right leg through that. So now we're gonna progress them up into more of a standing weight bearing phase of rehab. And so I'm just gonna have you do some terminal knee extensions. And actually, Elijah, while you're there, I'm gonna add that posterior chain into this. So tell me when you feel something. Yeah, I kinda of feel it in the glutes and hamstrings. Too. Perfect, great. And then go ahead and tell me when it's that same like six, seven out of 10. Great. great. And so now what we've done, and this is why it's a lot different than your Russian stimulation, it's just on and he's moving, but we're also using that quad and now we're adding in that glute and hamstring because we want it to be a force couple. We want all these movements and these muscle groups to work together to produce this functional movement. And so it's really sinking everything in, optimizing some of these movement patterns. Great, now go ahead and go into a single leg stance, weight shift, and then give me a march. So now we're really sinking that anterior chain and posterior chain, plus all the stimulation that he's getting through those pads is increasing his proprioceptive awareness at the same time. Great, come on out of there. Now, as we move into more of his pattern building, we can work on something as basic as an air squat, right? So go ahead, nice and slow for me. We're gonna work him through as much range as is indicated. In his case, it's just for demonstration, so I'm gonna have him do a full range air squat but we're gonna get good solid muscle contraction all the way through because that stem is staying on constantly. Now we can also do a split squat. We can work and do his lunge position and we can build it there too. Again, we're reinforcing movement patterns, reinforcing muscle activation, optimizing that. We can work on our hinges, so our deadlifts, picking things up off the ground. We can work on steps, really anything. Later in our rehab phases, we can also load this. So we can add a goblet squat. And so now he's working harder, we're loading him, but we're still, and even though his movement patterns are really competent, we're still gonna try to get as much out of his quads, glutes, that whole lower quarter as possible, and we're doing so because we're using that new fit newbie. Do the same thing with our lunges, our split squats, any of these patterns that we wanna do. So again, we wanna work smarter but, and harder at the same time. The new fit newbie allows us to do that. So that's part of our comprehensive approach to sports medicine. Again, using cutting edge modalities for the purpose of having cutting edge approach to sports medicine. Functional and appropriate progressions are really what helps take people from the early phases of rehab all the way back to return to sports. So it's something that we take really seriously here and we really try to think out. So in an earlier phase, as we get somebody like Elijah, let's say we're working on a knee or a lower body injury or surgery, we're gonna start integrating some core concepts and some challenges, get the muscles firing right, connecting his core, 
to that leg. So first we might start him here. If we're gonna start to build him into a deadlift, for example, I might have him just stand here, pulling on a band. It's gonna kick off his core, his hip, his balance just a little bit. Next, we're gonna start layering some tasks here. So I'm gonna have him actually go into a hinge, into a single arm row. And now he's learning and reinforcing that ability to, to hinge about that leg. But we're not putting a lot of excess force through his lower body because it's just him standing on it, which is great. From here, once he's got that down and we can start to get him a little bit more in the, out in the open, I can have him just work on a single leg hip hinge, for example, see how his balance is, how it's unsupported, and be able to progress him here. Once we got this down pretty well, we can then go ahead and add the kettlebell. So now we're gonna start our loading progressions. And I think this is really where we start to separate from other clinics is we're not afraid to load people. We wanna load them appropriately, but in order to meet the demands of their sport, they need to be strong so that they can meet those demands of their sport, right? Let's train above what, or get you to train so that you're above the demands of those sport even. That would be the smart way to get somebody back, truly. And once we've satisfied a little bit of light loading, we can start with our progressive loading and something like this hex bar deadlift. And we can do this, again, appropriately for where he is in his rehab, in his tolerance to adding load, and assuming that the patterns are satisfied. So we spent all this time building these patterns once, the, once they're really functional, then we load them. This is also where we can start taking them into something else more explosive, maybe like a kettlebell swing, or maybe we start doing some jumps or some plyometrics and again, progressing them up, but it's all based on having those fundamental patterns. Now we can do this with a squat. We can do this with a lunge. We can do this with a step. We can do it with a single leg squat. We can obviously do it with a deadlift, but it's that progressive loading as we've satisfied that pattern and now we're challenging that pattern and now it starts looking like training. And that is how we progressively will get people back to be ready for return to sport. Return to sport testing is one of our specialties. So we do this with all of our athletes that are trying to get back to sport, but also we have this open for that if somebody else has rehabbed elsewhere and they just wanna know where they are in their rehab process or they're going back to sport and haven't been tested, we can do that testing for them. So for us, the return to sport testing includes a functional movement screen, a Y balance test, and a hop test assessment. There's other components as well as we're working with our athletes here and we're taking them from early phase to late phase. But if we're just going to look at those three things, the FMS, Y balance, and hop testing, that's going to give us a really good picture of where they are being able to compare their involved side versus their uninvolved side. So I got Elijah here. This is just one of the movements in the FMS. The FMS is made up of seven different tests. There's two mobility tests. There are two core stability tests and there are three gross movement tests. And what we're looking for is some asymmetry side to side. Here he's doing a hurdle step. That's not what we're looking for there, but we are trying to see how well does he balance in this particular test on one leg. And you can see there's one side that's different than the other. So that's giving us something objective that we can come back to. So again, this is just for as an example. So, we come around here, this is going to be our Y balance test. I got Justin, he's gonna do a lower quarter Y balance test here. And what we're gonna do is see how he is able to reach into all these different directions. So we're looking at how stable is he on one leg? How much balance does he have? How does he control himself through space? And we're really going to look from a very micro standpoint, we're looking in half centimeter differences. So this is a very sensitive test, very specific test. The FMS is a little bit more broad. We can really start to drill down here. Now that's for the, for the lower body. For the upper body, we can do a similar test where we're going to compare one shoulder to the other. So if he were to get down into a plank position, we're going to see how he feels reaching into all three directions. And so we're really checking out the stability of that shoulder. So whether that's a rotator cuff repair, a slap repair, even just, hey, I've had some weakness on this side. How do you compare side to side? We can really test them and find out. The third part is going to be our hop testing. So I got Elijah here. He's going to do a hop test. He's gonna go out on one leg as far as you can go. Boom, nice. Why don't you go ahead and compare that to the other side for me, Elijah. Again, this is all very abbreviated. Boom, all right. So that's his single hop test. 
We would also do a triple hop test and a triple crossover hop test. But what we're looking for all of these, we're looking for no asymmetries on the FMS. We're looking for very close, so as, as much we call it limb symmetry index as possible on the Y balance. And same thing for the hop test. We really want to see you, we want to see you get an A. And really, we want to see you get like an A plus. So we want 95% or better. And really, if we can get you to 100%, then we know that you are operating on your involved or your rehab side just as well as on your uninvolved side. And that is super important because we know that the number one risk of injury is previous injury. So if we can try to mitigate that as much as possible, that's going to be huge. Now, the other cool part is we have a program that's called Move to Perform. And so we can take all that data and put it into Move to Perform. And we can even see here, and it's all and Move to Perform is super cool because it's based on age, gender, level, and sport. So if we want to take a high school female soccer player and compare her to other high school female soccer players, we can do that. If I want to take other 40 plus year old CrossFit athletes, I can compare myself to those, those people. But we can go ahead and put that in here. We can put our FMS, we can put our lower quarter Y balance test, and we can put any of the hop testing and have all, those, all that data in one place. And then it can even put it out onto a bell-shaped curve for that demographic. Now, this is data. This is powerful. And this is something that we do with all of our return to sport testing. This gets mailed to your doc or uh, emailed to your doctor. And it's a report that you can take. And it's also a snapshot in time of where you are and where we need to improve. So that is return to sport testing at DeWitt Physical Therapy. Thank you so much for watching our DeWitt Physical Therapy virtual sports medicine open house. I really hope that the video gave you an insight into what it is that we do here and the level of care that, that we give to our patients that we would give to your patients and the why behind why we're doing it to get our athletes back to sport and back to the activities that they love and do it in the right progressive way to make sure that they have the best chance of success with that return to activity. We would love to talk with you more. We'd love to help your patients achieve their goals, whether it is directly, meaning that they would come in and see us and work with us the entire time, whether that is they start with another provider and transition to us in that mid to late phase, or even if they use us as an accessory provider as they're using somebody that is in their insurance network and then using us as a supplementary. We just wanna be a resource for the athletes of Santa Cruz the medical professionals and the orthopedic surgeons and the family me medicine practitioners and really everybody in town to know what it is that we do here and where we fit in this grand scheme of medical providers. So if there's anything that we can do to help your patients feel, move, and perform better, that's what we're here for. Please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd also like to extend an invitation that if you ever wanted to come by and do a team meetup or get together in some capacity, do a workshops, whatever it is, we would be very interested in building relationships in this town with our athletes and patients in mind. And so if you're ever interested in anything like that, please reach out. Let's set something up. Let's help this community get back to being awesome together.